Hi guys, this is Raquel with Paints and Glitter and welcome to this multiple part tutorial that where I will be showing you how to make a mini album using the Mythical Glade Tonic Studios dies as well as the papers from My Mind's Eye Comfort and Joy and some other elements. I'm going to show you here other items that I picked up to do this tutorial and you can definitely follow along. This is a set of dies from Tonic that I will be cutting out and hopefully using in this book as well as some little items here from the Merry Days collection and some brads that I found from Bow Bunny. These are items that I picked up at my local Tuesday morning. I realized the paper collection is not from Merry Days but I could not find the matching papers when I was shopping so I just picked up little elements here that I thought would go nicely together. I love the script on the stickers. I just thought there were lots of beautiful little images in this paper collection. I absolutely love Christmas and so I thought I would make a video tutorial for those of you who have asked me how I make some of my mini albums. So let's begin with the first elements of a mini album which are going to be the front and back cover. They are cut out of the largest die cut from the Mythical Glade collection. And here is the spine. What you're going to see me do is that I picked out a piece of paper that is about uh, six and a quarter inches tall and then 12 inches wide. I start then scoring first at half an inch. From there, I only score a sixteenth of an inch away from that score line. Then I place this on my scoreboard so that I can start scoring at every half an inch from there. I then only score a quarter inch away from those lines. And then I repeat this pattern and you're going to see it and uh, we'll come back to that. But I'm scoring at every half an inch and then again quarter of an inch. And I just repeat that again. And it doesn't really matter where you place it on your scoreboard so long as you're repeating that pattern of half an inch, half an inch, then quarter inch. You're going to see that pattern show up very quickly there. So there's three sets of those score lines. And then I'm going to repeat it again. So this is going to be another half inch, half inch, and then quarter inch. From there, I'll repeat this again and I'm just placing it again on my scoreboard there so I can score it at half an inch, half an inch, and repeating that pattern that you see there. I just counted how many, which was a total of four. Doing half an inch, half an inch, quarter inch, then half an inch, half an inch, and it might look a little tedious, but I promise you there's a, there's a reason to this. <laughs> there's a method to this madness. And then there you see me score at a sixteenth of an inch. And then another inch there at the end. Where I made that last score line, I'm actually going to cut that part away because I will not need it for my book because I've given myself plenty of score lines here that will allow me to make an accordion fold to fit the pages into my album and you will see. The next part of this is that I'm going to start folding right in the center of those half inch score lines and these are going to be my mountain folds. Now this is if you don't have the other die from Tonic Studios that allows you to make the spine of a book because you, you certainly don't need that to make a spine. But what you see me repeating here is that with every one of those uh, score lines where there were half an inch size scores or score score lines, I should say, I went ahead and folded those as mountain folds. And then here's the back of that. So from the edge, I place my adhesive so that I have an, an inch on each side there to adhere onto my book. And then again, this is the back of that accordion fold. So I'm placing an ad adhesive here and I'm going to show you what this will look like in a moment, but I'm going to take that and fold it over and then fold it back again. And you see here that for every single one of those mountain folds, what I'm doing is I'm placing adhesive so that I can then make sure that those mountain folds stay up so I'm folding it against itself and then away 
And what you will end up with are going to be a bunch of little spaces that will be the quarter inch spaces. And I've covered this in another tutorial, but I'm hoping that this is clear. If this is your very first time making a mini album and you're following this tutorial, feel free to play this at a slower speed. But of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or leave your questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to respond. But you're going to see in a moment here, this is just a pattern that repeats itself where you place your adhesive and if you see there, you're gonna see all those little channels, they all should measure quarter, one quarter of an inch. So you have an inch on each side and then a quarter of an inch on all those small parts and then here's the front where I keep folding back and forth and I keep scoring and this is to allow that paper to start breaking down, if you will. So it will allow me to place my pages in the book. So you see all of those mountain folds and here you can measure this piece out to see how big you can make the decorative piece of paper that's going to cover the back of this once you place this into your book. But to avoid bulk, bulk I'm sorry, what I do is that I start cutting this down just at a 45 degree angle only on the tips there so that this doesn't protrude from the pages that I add to my book. And I'm just doing this on every single one of these mountain folds. And I like to use my Tim Holtz scissors because they're nice and sharp. And this is 65 pound uh, cardstock. So here I go again, I'm now placing adhesive on the back of this because this is going to now adhere onto my book. And I'm going to be covering this part with another piece of paper so that you don't see the adhesive, of course, but just enough there so that I can cover that. And then of course I'm getting rid of any excess and this is really strong adhesive. I recommend either score tape or the strongest adhesive you can find. Now I have a piece of paper there that measured four and a quarter inches wide. And what I'm measuring here is how I'm going to place that spine into my book and You'll see that I measured an inch away from each edge and now I'm placing adhesive right along where I place those little tick marks with my pen. And this will start making sense once you see me adhere this onto the book. But again, using the strongest adhesive that you can find, this, I cannot remember the brand name of it, but it's a really good double-sided tape and it tears away nicely also. So that's helpful when building the, the book. So here I'm scoring right there and that is just an inch away from each edge. And again, that measured about four and a quarter inches wide. And then I fold that. On that fold, I place that piece of paper right against the edge of my, what will be my front cover and I did use a crocodile to round the edges there, but it's not necessary, to be honest. You don't have to do that. But then I adhere that to the one inch, then I place my other cover, and I adhere it to the inside. So that's why that's folded, and I'm just placing that next page right on top. And if you see there, I just removed the adhesive, and now I have my front and back covers adhered. There you see how I can fold them. And that's going to be the spine of my book. This is where I'm going to adhere those mountain folds, that strip of paper that had all those mountain folds. Now I like to remove, remove the adhesive from the center and work my way from the center out. And I just eyeball this, but you can definitely mark it with a uh, ruler and pencil if you like but I just start taking those strips of adhesive away that I had shown you earlier. And you wanna be patient with this, of course, because you wanna make sure that that adheres really nicely to the spine of your book, but you also wanna make sure that you're not pulling too hard on that or it will warp your spine. So here's the end of that where I still have some adhesive there and you might want to use a tool, as you can tell, it's a little bit hard to remove that uh, that backing, but once you've got it, 
it should lay down very nicely and you can just burnish that as I did there now here you want this to fold so what I'm doing is I'm coaching that paper to start folding there but not too hard just gently and then I finish it off with my bone folder just adding a little bit more pressure so that that front page and the back page will fold exactly where it's adhered onto that spine this will help you so that you don't get cracking on your paper that's a big uh, a common question you get on social media as to mini albums is my paper cracked why well you know it's it takes a bit of patience to create this, these books and my recommendation is that you just be patient with it be gentle with it and use your bone folder whenever possible now you're going to want to cover this up you don't want those raw edges so here's one way to go about it I just cut the same size pa paper I'm sorry to cover that up I covered the inside of my book and there you see also how that looks so finished now nice and finished and then I did cover the back but I want you to see the spine here that piece of paper is the decorative piece of paper that I'm going to use and it's about a sixteenth of an inch taller than what I used for the spine there so that gave me just enough room there and then here I'm going to cover up that piece of ribbon that's how I like to sandwich it in between my papers it makes it easier so there you see the back where I did place the ribbon and then another black piece of cardstock and I'm going to just repeat the same thing on the front keeping this nice and simple and yes I use a lot of glue but here you can go ahead and place this and burnish it nicely that's going to cover up your ribbon allow you to close this book very nicely and as you saw those are now um, two layers of cardstock as well as that as that um, the uh, thin chipboard in the center and this is going to be the cover and spine of your mini album which I'm going to cover again in that same decorative paper because I love that pattern that was my favorite one out of that entire collection it has that wood grain with the falling snowflakes and I thought that was just darling so I cut it in the same size and there's a tiny bit of that overlap with the black cardstock but I'm not at all worried about that um, I think it's gonna look just fine but here's how I finish that off and now I have a nice cover to my mini album as well as a back cover and what I will do in the next video is that I'm going to show you um, how I start making the pages but here you see how I'm covering now with the decorative uh, the designer paper the inside covers and these of course you could definitely cut into these papers if you wanted to you could emboss these papers dry emboss them you could make a pocket on these I mean you could get very elaborate if you want to I'm just keeping it nice and simple for the sake of this tutorial but this is how I will go ahead and finish the inside of the um, front and back covers I just selected a pretty plaid paper there that was nice and uh, bright to contrast with the darkness of the covers but please come back we will continue working on this book and this is a sneak peek and i thank you so much for watching and i hope that you can be inspired and be blessed